Uh, two court cases that could kill pipeline companies' cash machine. Um, our listeners are probably aware, if they've been just paying attention to a lot of our picks, but we uh, all three of us have been saying that a lot of these pipeline players like Spectra Energy and uh, you know Enterprise Products Partners and all those guys, um, they're kind of the babies that got thrown out with the bathwater in this huge market you know, energy sell-off. Mm-hmm. Um, currently, and this is an article that was put out by the New York Times, um, two defunct companies, Sabine, Sabine? Sabine. Sabine, I apologize. Oil and gas and Quicksilver Resources are, amongst other things, seeking to get rid of long-term contracts the two have with several midstream pipeline operators who count on the rates on these long-term distribution contracts to pay the dividends. Uh, worse yet, in, an ar- in the article that was put up in the New York Times detailing the situation, an unnamed judge is asserted to be inclined to allow Sabine to end its contract with a Chenier Energy subsidiary that operates the pipelines. Um, are you guys scared about this, and should we be selling all of our pipeline stocks now? This, I, I'm not completely certain how to fully digest this one yet. I mean, it, it's one of those things when you read it, it does certainly throw up a red flag. One of the biggest things that they're talking about in this is throwing out minimum volume commitments, which is something right. that has kind of made made hay for a lot of. It's absolutely companies. guaranteed money. Right. Well, yeah. So the the contract is for our listeners between Sabian and the Shenier Energy subsidiary. It was guaranteed volumes through 2023. Right. So this is not small potatoes. Exactly. And so for some of these things, you know, you're talking about small piddling companies. You know, Sabian Oil and Gas and Quicksilver Resources right. weren't exactly the largest names when it came to selling oil and gas and using pipeline space. The the bigger fear is, is say you've got a large company. Ultra like Petroleum, Ultra for instance. Petroleum, or a Chesapeake Every Energy. Every favorite word is precedent. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody like a Chesapeake Except Energy or something like that. Well, and, yeah. and then, what if one of those companies goes to, you know, I to a, a larger right. pipeline company says we can't meet these volume commitments anymore. We're going to take you to court on it. Uh, uh, you know we've we've seen kind of the effects of that uh, over the past year. One company in particular, Williams Partners, more than twenty. I believe it's more than twenty. It might be as high as thirty percent of their revenue stream comes specifically from Ch- Ch- uh, Chesapeake Energy. Wow. And with Chesapeake Energy in the financial straits that it is right now. If, oh, they did just have an asset sale. Yeah, seven hundred million dollars. But you know, if this <laughs> minimum volume commitment contract out, can get yeah. torn up, then you're looking at a pipeline company who's kind of left hat in hand. You know, how right. am I going to fill these pipes? Um, Taylor, I don't know how to word this, so I'm probably going to butcher it. But I was curious to get your thoughts. Isn't there an argument if you're the Shenyer Energy subsidiary or just one of the pipeline companies? Isn't there an argument to be made between, okay, listen, we've got these contracts with these guys. They're continuing to operate. Our contract isn't structurally the problem. They just got over leveraged and they just need to talk to the bondholders. Isn't. Yeah, it's absolutely the case. It's like, what the hell? Right. When you sign this contract. Yeah, there's always. You're still be, using us. There's probably. always going to be a point where you're in a contract for 15 years that there's going to be a better opportunity out there. You can't just jump ship. Right. I mean, the comments that they made like argue that they could save $35 million by ending the contract and then save millions more by building an entirely new system. Yeah, a- yeah <laughs> exactly. I could sell my gas-guzzling car that it's under lease and just not cancel the lease I can and then get go a, get an yeah. EV and save tons of money on gas. But I'd have to pay a fee to get right. out of my lease. And, and when you're bankrupt, it's kind of hard to do that. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's the thing. Like, yeah, where's the money sh- coming from to build this magical pipeline from the sky? <laughs> like, this oh. Chenier company is obviously operating properly because they're not going bankrupt. Why right. are you going to save a company that operated itself out of funds? Right. If they're just probably going to do it again, if they get bailed out, I mean, I don't yeah. understand it. No, it you're going to let this contagion spread to a sector that has largely been absolved from it, and. I mean, it's just totally bonkers. Weird. Okay. It seems to me, and so let's put in the hypothetical situation as an investor, if this is something that is legitimately an issue. Um, One of the ways that I think you can kind of maybe skirt or (coughs) help yourself as an investor avoid as much of this issue is to look further down the stream of the pipe. So when you have 
a lot of the things that they're talking about here is mostly like gathering assets. So that's like taking an individual well and bringing it to a bigger pipe. Those are going to be the ones that are going to be at the most risk here because, you know, Quicksilver Resources isn't going to keep drilling at that specific right. well to keep that pipe filled. However, if you're to go from maybe like from a refiner to a distributor sort of pipeline network mm-hmm. or larger pipelines that have They're consolidated yeah. all that gathering, then you're looking at somebody who's probably going to be a little bit more stable because despite you could see 60%, 70% reduction on a gathering pipe, we're not going to see 10 20 30% production declines across the United States on large pipeline transportation networks. Right. 